hello students so in this class in this lecture we will discuss about performance management in low power vlsi circuits this one is the topic that we will discuss in our uh, in this lecture i am taking this topic for explanation purpose i am taking this topic from the book uh, low power vlsi design by gary yep okay so uh, when we design any uh, any circuit that works on low power so at that time it is very important to manage its performance okay so the this performance can be in terms of area this performance can be in terms of in terms of power consumption this performance can be in terms of speed also okay so uh, there are so there are various techniques there are various techniques that can be used to increase the performance of low power circuits out of them we are discussing here one technique out of various techniques we are taking one technique and we will discuss it here okay this one is the uh, diagram of the technique that we discussed here okay so uh, this performance management technique that we discuss here is mainly used in asynchronous data processing systems now first of all we need to find what is the mean of asynchronous circuit we know that in digital uh, we know that in digital electronics there are two type of circuits one is asynchronous and another one is the synchronous okay so when we divide any digital circuits on the basis of its clock pulse so we can divide it into two types first one is the asynchronous circuit and the second one is the synchronous circuit when the out uh, in in asynchronous circuit the output of one sub circuit is provided as a input to another sub circuit it means that we cannot provide the clock pulse simultaneously but in synchronous circuit we provide the clock pulse in all sub circuits simultaneously okay so uh, this performance management technique is only applicable when we use asynchronous circuit and that is used for the data processing what is the mean of data processing data processing means we are doing some operation with the data and uh, transfer it from one end to another end you can see here one end is a data input and another one is the data output so uh, when we provide data from this end so uh, there are the several processing that occurs between output and input and after this processing we will get the output from this side so that's why the that's why the process that's why we are doing several processing with the data so we can say this circuit as data processing circuit okay so this data processing circuit consists of several elements such as fifo what is fifo fifo is first in first out buffer it means that we uh, when we take uh, when we are taking several flip flops and connect connect each flip flop uh, with the series with the previous one so we are getting a register when we connect several flip flops with the series so we are getting a register and when we use register to when we use this register to store some bits so at that time we can say it as buffer okay this buffer is nothing but a register okay when we are uh, when we connect eight flip flops to make this buffer at that time we are uh, we can say this one is the eight bit register 
this flip flop this fifo is the this fifo buffer is of 8 bit when we are taking 16 flip flops in series so we can say this fifo as 16 bit register okay so in data processing in this data processing circuit we are taking a uh, fifo this one is the data processing unit same as the FIFO input we are taking the uh, FIFO output in the output side of data processing is same as one where here we are using a load sensor and the DC supply voltage okay now there are the uh, there are the two mains uh, there are the two main uh, operation that occurs in this performance management technique one is one is done by this DC voltage converter and another is done by this load sensor okay so we are discussing first what is the use of this data voltage converter here data data voltage converter and later on we will discuss why we use this load sensor here okay okay so this one is the this one is the output side this one is the input side okay so when the out when the throughput in the out when the throughput of the circuit or we can say the requirement of output from the circuit is high at that time we increase the value of this uh, supply voltage okay and when we need the low throughput from the circuit it means that when we need a low output very few outputs from the output of the circuits at that time we are we can we can um, we can minimize the supply voltage okay so we can say this supply voltage is totally dependent on the throughput okay throughput we can say this voltage uh, when uh, when we required higher out uh, when we require much output uh, from the circuits so at that time we increase the voltage when we need uh, minimum output from the circuit so at that time we can minimize the voltage okay so this one is the f this one is the first way how can we uh, how can we manage the performance of the circuit and the in the next way in the second way we can use a load sensor here okay we can use a load sensor here to control the performance how it operates suppose uh, when we provide the input when we provide the input so this load sensor uh, when we provide the input so this input is provided in a FIFO buffer this input is stored in this FIFO buffer okay so the, what is the working of this load sensor this load sensor checks the this load sensor checks the buffer okay this load sensor checks the buffer if the flip uh, if the FIFO is full if the FIFO is fully occupied at the time this load sensor provide the uh, at the time lead this load sensor provide the output to DC voltage converter to increase the voltage supply so when we, uh, when we increase the voltage supply so uh, automatically the throughput of the circuit will increase and when the DC uh, sensor uh, when this load sensor uh, when this load sensor find that this FIFO buffer is not occupied fully so at that time it controls the DC voltage converter and minimize the supply voltage okay so if uh, supply voltage is reduced so automatically the output throughput is decreased okay so according to the input according to the working according to this according to the requirement we can increase or decrease the performance of the circuit okay so if we reduce this VDD so automatically the power will reduced and we can say if power is reduced so performance will definitely increased okay so this adaptive this adaptive technique is very similar to this adaptive technique that we discussed here is very much similar to the adaptive filtering technique adaptive filtering technique this one is the diagram of filter okay uh, suppose uh, the filter is the filter is basically this one is the second topic adaptive filtering first we discussed here first what we discussed here first we discussed performance management and for performance management uh, we are discussing uh, performance management in uh, uh, data processing circuit now we can uh, we can also study this adapt uh, we can also discuss this adaptive performance in the digital filter circuit okay so uh, 
you can uh, you can read all the theoretical portion uh, from here okay okay i am explaining just the working of this circuit okay you can take a screenshot you can take a screenshot for your theoretical purpose now you can take the remaining portion the remaining theoretical portion okay now we know that uh, we can divide the filter we can divide the filter on the basis of its input on the basis of filtering frequency on the basis of input signals so if we divide the filters of any circuit on the basis of input so we can say there are the two type of filter in electronics one, one is the analog filter and another one is the digital filter analog filter is made by using resistor capacitor and by uh, resistor capacitor and inductor okay but uh, when we uh, when we need to design a digital when we need uh, need to design a digital filter so at that time we cannot use this resistor capacitor these active and passive elements okay at that time we are doing we can uh, at that time uh, we use some coding techniques we make some algorithm okay and this algorithm is known as digital filters okay so by using this coding by using this coding we can control the digital input okay if we consider as if we consider a circuit in which our input is xn the and the output is yn uh, so at that time this one is the uh, this one is the diagram of digital filter here d is the delay element here d is the delay element in any type of digital filter or we can say in any type of filter uh, to increase its performance uh, we can we can increase its order it means that when we use several elements when we uh, when we connect several elements uh, several elements in series so we increase its order and when we increase the order of any filter so automatically its uh, uh, performance will increased okay here some one graph is mentioned here here one graph is mentioned here this one is the uh, this one is the graph for low pass circuit low pass filter okay we know that in low pass filter uh, the low pass filter um, you know, passes full frequency in the uh, full frequency in the uh, uh, full amplitude in the low frequency range and minimize the amplitude in the high frequency range okay so this one is the this one is its ideal structure okay but if we increase its order if we increase its order so automatically this graph will move towards this graph that is moving downwards from this end will uh, downward from the uh, this end okay so we can say when we increase the order so uh, this characteristic is moved towards the ideal characteristic of filter okay so by increasing the order by increasing the order of the filter we can increase the performance of the circuit but but uh, but uh, we can but the uh, we can uh, we need to compromise we need to compromise something what we need to compromise what we need to compromise uh, suppose if if we increase the order it means that if uh, if we connect several if we connect the several delay elements uh, series with each other so by using this we can increase the order of the circuit but if we connect several elements so automatically the power dissipation will increased okay so this one is all about the this one is the all about the performance management in any circuit this one is the equation this one is the equation for digital filters this one is the equation for digital filter okay and this one is the some uh, this one is the diagram that represent the framework of updating filter order length according to requirement we vary the order of the filter okay so this one is all about in the topic of performance management in next lecture we will discuss switching activity reduction thank you so much